Well, it's 60 years since Irish coffee left our shores to become a worldwide phenomenon. These days you can find Irish or Gaelic coffee on menus anywhere from Bogota to Beijing. But how did the drink become so ubiquitous? Well, it's all down to the efforts of one man, a newspaper columnist by the name of Staunton Delaplane. Niall Martin has been finding out how one man put Irish coffee on the world map. In the 1940s, the first transatlantic flights on flying boats came into Foynes. It was a long journey with no heating on board. Chef Joe Sheridan had an idea for a drink that would warm frozen passengers. Now that history is well known, but how the drink became a worldwide sensation is down to engine failure on board a plane full of priests and American journalists bound for Rome, including one, Stan Delaplane. Stan Delaplane was a syndicated columnist in America going out to about 30 newspapers, about 3 million readers a week. And while he was on his plane, it developed engine trouble. And it was full of uh, priests. And they all start praying. <laughs> So, of course, threw quite a fright into the other people on the plane. So, of course, they were going to be landing to Shannon anyway. They made it to Shannon and they were going to have to overnight because in those times you didn't have, you know, a standby engine ready to go on. You had to bring in another plane. But anyway, naturally, as a good journalist, I was looking for two things, a story and a drink. And in Shannon in 1950, he found both. So the flight was grounded and 35 travelling American newspapermen got something not on the books. A day in Ireland and a five o'clock breakfast of the best ham and eggs and sausage this side of paradise and a special confection called Gaelic coffee, which is a layer of John Powers Irish whiskey, a layer of black coffee and a layer of whipped cream. So he wrote about it and it became one of the most popular things. As a matter of fact, over the rest of his career, he actually used to get letters saying, eh, why aren't you writing about Irish coffee again, right? No, he, he could never understand it because people never asked him to repeat things. But he used to have to keep on repeating the Irish coffee story, right? For 44 years, barman Michael Collins served Irish coffees to anyone who passed through Shannon. He served Presidents Kennedy, Ford, Bush and Yeltsin, but just the one. I take um, some brown sugar, spoon and a half of brown sugar, and a shot of whiskey. It's a shot, a uh, quarter, a quarter gill. Okay, some nice strong coffee. Fill it up within a half an inch of the top. Now we have brown sugar, whiskey, and coffee, and I'll stir it just to dissolve the sugar. Now, so we put a little cream. You can have an Irish coffee any time, especially after a meal, and it's a great pick me up as well, you know. Now there's your Irish coffee. Here we had a fantastic Irish product invented by an Irish uh, chef, Joe Chardon, at Fines, and made famous by an American, Stan Dunaplane. So what, what better story could you have from a marketing point of view? There's something like a touch of class about the Irish coffee, though, isn't there? I think, I think there is. I think there's a touch of magic, the way the cream sits on top of the, the coffee. And I suppose that's part of the, the art of making Irish coffee, is to get the cream to sit on top of the coffee. In the 50s and 60s, they were selling up to a thousand Irish coffees per day. And of course, Irish distillers went over the moon about it all because they were shifting so much whiskey. And it had nothing to do with them? No, nothing whatsoever. It was about people having what they saw as a sophisticated way of having a shot of whiskey without people realizing what they were having. The old camp bar at Shannon still exists today, protected by a preservation order. This was where glamorous stars stranded by bad weather or mechanical problems mingled with airport workers in the evening. So how did Irish coffee move from a bar in a field to worldwide fame? In his book, Dermot Walsh tells how Stan Delaplane was in an almost deserted bar on San Francisco's Fisherman's Wharf. He had this famous night in San Francisco where he was based, he was at the San Francisco Chronicle. And he was down in a pub that was essentially on its knees called the Bona Vista. And there was only him, one other fellow from the newspaper down the counter who was simply getting drunk. And the owner of the pub said to him, what about this Irish coffee thing? How did they make that? And they made it, and once they made it, it took him about eight or nine times, which the fellow down the counter was quite happy about because he kept on getting the ones that were ruined, right? And they, uh, they actually made it eventually. With the result that 
in the bonnet system. The thing simply took off. But if you went to uh, San Francisco, you did two things. You went on the trolley, and you went down to the Bonavista on the Fisherman's Quay, and you had an Irish coffee. And within the sales of Irish whiskey, absolutely bloomed in America. And, the, and also, the owner of the Bonavista took it upon himself to head off to places like Las Vegas and elsewhere. And like, no charge, no nothing, he was just on a mission telling people and showing people, the bar staff naturally, how to make the ideal Irish coffee. And it spread like that. And as I said, each year, uh, Delaplane would retell his little story about discovering Irish coffee. And that was the way it happened. And that's how Joe Sheridan's famous Irish coffee made its way right across North America. Waiting for a Boston flight at Shannon while we were filming was someone who was well acquainted with Irish coffee. I'm Lynn Turnbull. And my sister Ruth owns a place called the Elizabeth on South Main Street in Providence, Rhode Island. Now she started it 40 years ago and she started it with Irish coffees and she only used Jamesons and she sells the most Jamesons in all of our state and then beyond, okay? My sister is 78 years old and she's still opening that place and selling Irish coffees. We in this country have a lot to be thankful for to Stan Delaplane. And people don't even realise that if you went out to the airport now, nobody, virtually nobody, except the old stagers, would even recall who and what he was and what an enormous influence. Uh, he not only made tourism to Ireland in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s even, but he was the man who made Irish coffee. A week after this interview, Dermot Walsh died of cancer, which he had fought for 16 years. He was passionate about Shannon and the people that gave us an emblem of Irishness, like Shannon's first boss, Brendan O'Regan, chef Joe Sheridan, and of course, Stanton Delaplane, the man who brought Irish coffee to the world.